This is my new Netgear Neo TV 350. As far as I know, there are no other reviews for this product. The only other reviews that I could find was for the 550, which has some extra features, which this one doesn't, and it was a bit of a disappointment um, to discover those things. But anyway, it um, it does what it's supposed to do. On the, uh, the front cover of the box, there is a picture telling you uh, what it should look like. This is accurate, but it does give an impression that this device can do a lot more than it can actually do. There it is. It's got uh, three USB ports, a uh, card reader, HDMI. Let's have a look at this box. Some other things that they say in there. Yeah, yeah blah, blah, all the various formats that this thing supports. Uh, a number of video formats, audio, uh, photos. It cannot read text files or HTML or PDF or anything like that. So if you want to include any information about your movies uh, or songs, then uh, you have to um, type it in Microsoft Word and then take a screenshot and then save it as a JPEG and make sure that the JPEG is the right size dimension for your television screen which I have done actually but it's quite a lot of work to do anyway that's the box let's have a look at the device uh, you can see it's uh, quite small it's very lightweight there's an air vent at the top an air vent on the side on this side as well there it is this device gets really really hot so make sure it's well ventilated on the front you have a light which goes on. No, that's not the light. That's the sensor. The light is somewhere over here. Um, USB 1 is over here and uh, your card reader. I really like the fact that uh, it's got some port at the front of the device so that you can plug things in uh, whenever you want. At the back you have the on-off switch. Uh, you've got the power, you've got the AV and the component plugs. Uh, so you can use either one. That's SPDIF, I have no idea what that is. HDMI, the cable is not included in the box. You've got a network Ethernet thing and uh, two more USB ports on that side. And uh, it comes with a stand if you want to use the stand. Let's see if I can quickly plug in the stand. It goes like that. There. So it stands up, upright like that. The remote control is very simple, but it contains everything you need. What I like particularly is that the back button has a slight little knob on it so you can feel it with your finger when it's dark. There's no backlight on this thing, so if, if it's dark, then it's dark. It works with two batteries that are included in the pack as well. This is just one of the other cables uh, that has come with it. Uh, this is the component cable. I don't use that for my television. I use the AV cable, which is already plugged into my TV. And it comes with a network cable. I have no idea how long this thing is. And of course you've got the, um, uh, the, power, the power supply. Also in the box you have a um, installation guide in color, which is very useful to me because I'm really clueless when it comes to all these cables. And there is a CD-ROM with the user guide on it. Probably some drivers as well, I don't know. I'm just going to plug this thing in and then uh, I'll be with you in a moment. This is my three-year-old television. And there is the unit. Well, this thing on top, not this thing. Uh, the pink thing is a flash drive. Now, to use this thing, I need to press a few buttons. <coughs> I need to do that every time I switch on the television. Where's my remote? Here it is. All right, this is the uh, the startup menu. And uh, we have these three things, video, music, and photos. If you use any of these three icons, it will show you only those media. But if you have multiple drives, uh, then it will show all of the media in all of the drives. 
uh, in one long alphabetical list. Now I don't like that, I need to keep my things sorted, like by genre or by age or something like that. So for me I would have to use the file manager. So let's go to that one. Uh, this is thumbnail view. I'm just going to go to options and say list. This is the list view. Um, I use USBs and there are currently two USB drives connected to my device. I'm going to use the first one. So you can see I've got just four files on there. Two movies and two JPEGs. Um, and this is the list view. But you can also use thumbnail view. Let's go to options again. It, it is in list view actually. Thumbnail view... Yeah. Read them and weep. Uh, in thumbnail view only the JPEGs have thumbnails. Well, have actual picture thumbnails. The uh, the video files, uh, these things, uh, they look like folders, but they're really video files. Um, one of the things that I found really disappointing, and which I expected, but which wasn't really specified anywhere, is that there is no wall of movies or movie wall uh, on this device. So you cannot organize your movies in any kind of way, uh, or add information about it, etc. It doesn't read text files, it doesn't read HTML or PDF or anything like that. So if you want any sort of information about the movies, you have to type it in Microsoft Word, take a screenshot, save it as JPEG, and make sure it is the right size for your television, which is what I have done. So I'm just going to look at that image. Uh, as you can see, I added some text here from Wikipedia, um, an image. Um, this image is actually much bigger than the, the, the television screen. Uh, for some reason, maybe it has something to do with my television, um, it bleeds a lot of the, uh, the edge of the JPEG. Uh, so I had to leave a lot of space on the edges of the JPEG to be able to read the text. Anyway, there's that. If you press the next button, it goes to the next... No, that's not the next button. That's the rotate button. There's the next button. It takes you to the next um, uh, file of the same media type, uh, even though there were movie files um, in between. So you've got this uh, second one here. If I want to watch this movie, then I just press the back button, and uh, the file that I had looked at last is now selected. So then I know, okay, well, the next file, if it has the same file name, would then be the movie. Uh, I don't look forward to creating all of those epics. Let's go through some of the options. Options menu on. Uh, you can choose how you want to view it. Let's play a movie. No, I want to start from the start. Uh, the options there, you, if you have subtitles or audio, you can select which channel you want to use. The information just shows you a progress bar and some information about it. Um, and the time seek allows you to, if you know exactly uh, the minute or the second or the, the hour that you want to be at, let's, let's select some minutes, let's say five minutes into it, enter. There we go. Uh, interesting features. You can zoom. Yeah. You can change the volume. But there is no mute button. I normally just put it at top volume and use the computer, uh, use the uh, the television's own mute. I mean, uh, mute and volume buttons. Um, you can, uh, let's go back, you can increase the speed, there we go, up to twice as fast uh, and you still get sound, uh, anything faster than that, let's say 1632, there's no sound, so you can seek forward, and you can also seek back, uh, 32 speed if you want. Um, yeah, that's it. Can pause obviously. 
can bring the menu back and look at some of the other things while the movie is playing but some of these things at the moment you select something the movie stops playing setup there we go the movie stopped playing go back and the movie is not playing anymore and to get back to the movie you actually have to go and select it where was that movie where is it it was this one it, I think it was that one and then resume playback yes it's gonna ask me yeah resume playback